Welcome to the Mike and Much Podcast. This is actually a unique episode, Max and Shane. Shane's with us here for the opening uh, because we're shooting a pilot right now for our listeners. For our podcast listeners, uh, have we been up front with them right now? No, let's be up front with them because uh, this is going to air. They're going to be listening to this tomorrow. Or sorry, on Friday. On Friday. So for our podcast listeners, we're uh, shooting a pilot, a TV pilot, which is just basically a version of the of the podcast, but for your eyes. Not just oh. your ears. Wow, you're like a poet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Do we feel off today, or does it feel pretty no, good? No, we're grooving. Mm-hmm. Well, we're all in makeup, which is kind of different for yeah. us. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's very exciting times. Actually, uh, we've uh, outfitted this this studio with uh, some personalized items that we re- that we had requested. So we have a Michael Jordan poster in the back. Did you request MJ? Uh, I don't know who did. Who yeah. requested the Nick Carter poster with the dolphin? Hey guys, it doesn't matter who requested <laughs> what. You know, sometimes you just want a Nick Carter poster with a dolphin. Uh, speaking of Nick Carter, we interviewed him in this room, Max. Really? What do you think he thought about as he walked up the, th- the th- two flights up to this because it's a pretty sketchy like building. Because I wonder, because he, he's used to probably nice things. And getting, <laughs> you think? I think so. Of course, he's yeah. a millionaire. Well, he's a millionaire. Well, actually, I don't know. Who knows? But uh, but dragging him up here, I, I think this is going to be one of. Uh, but maybe it'll give the show grit, and people are like, oh, this must be really important if they uh, if they're making me go all the way over here. I think he dug it. I think he dug yeah. the space. I don't know. You were there, Shane. With what did podcasts, you think? I think. Bigger podcasts record in shittier spaces too. Yeah, like Mark like Maron. WTF? He's had, in a garage. Yeah, exactly. In, President Obama went there. Yeah, that's so I true. think it just gives it street cred and it's cool. Yeah, when you're in like a stuffy studio and it's like you're on a breakfast morning show. How did he look? Look great. Look good. Yeah. Yeah. He did, was he like super in shape? Or, or he was wearing a coat. He was wearing a coat. I tried to hug him though and get a feel. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. no, just, well, we got a picture with him. And oh yeah, he looked pretty good in the photo. Hey, yeah, look. but I hate when you get a picture with a celebrity because you're forced to post that photo. Uh huh. So I looked horrible in it. So uh, people were commenting how much better he looked than me. It's uh, like one of these people's aging well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when we're doing these interviews, we we listen back to them, and it's it's, some, it's good. It's a good exercise because sometimes. In the room, it can feel great, and then you listen back, and it doesn't feel that great. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the room, it'll feel terrible, but then you listen back, Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, it was a pretty good interview. So I sent the interview out to a few close friends of ours who listen to the pod and have a good sense of, uh, you know, what the guests are like and who gives good interviews. And one person said, oh, that was a great interview. And the next person said, oh, he didn't say anything. Actually, you know what? Uh, So our friend uh, Vanessa uh, from Hamilton, she just got engaged to a guy named Scott. And Scott's a big fan of the pod, and I was hanging out with him at your house watching the, the Raptors game. Yeah. And he had some good notes, actually. He said, well, he asked me, he was like, do you think Mike feels that he has enough currency to call out a guest and say, no, that's a bullshit answer? And I was like, and this, I was like, that's, so, that's such a good observation because I don't think we're there yet, but I think hopefully, like in a year, we'll be able to really put our foot down. But right now we want it. We still want to have a reputation of being an inviting place for guests. And hope, And I don't think that really makes the interview suffer that much, but it is building a little bit of credibility. You think you'll get to the point where you go, that's bullshit. I don't know if I'd say it in those terms, <laughs> but, I, but I'd like to be able to acknowledge if it feels, or like just pull out of it. But I also don't want people to feel uncomfortable on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think there's a, a funny way to do that. But again, you have to be that person. Let's, let's run a funny way. How, how would we do this? Okay, say... Uh, Ask me a question. I'll give you a bullshit answer. Um, Mike, uh, how does it feel to be a pop star? Well, you know, since I was a kid, I've always dreamed of being super successful. And oh, music- f- off. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, but guys, we got Richard Linklater on the show today. It's yeah. a big deal. He's a huge director. It would is? you say that's the biggest guest we've ever had? Uh, he was about medium-sized, but I think... Uh, <laughs> I knew that would get Max. It's the what kind of show is this? bad it is, though. That's not a good joke. Um, no, I just... you really good. reacted for TV. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. No, He's good. fighting for the Ed McMahon spot. <laughs> you better stay on your toes, Max. Uh, no, he's probably one of the most famous. The most accomplished, probably. He's, you know, no, I think in entertainment circles, he's pretty well accomplished, but or well-known. But, like, if you ask the average secretary... You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't pass the mom test. No, it definitely does yeah. not pass the mom pass test. Maxi, aside from Richard Linklater, which we'll get to in a mm-hmm. bit, uh, you're back from tour. I haven't seen you in like a month. I know it's been a long time. It's good to see you guys. Shane got a new pair of glasses. Yeah, which I like. We'll get to that in a second. You but don't like them? N- I, not my mind's not made up yet. Okay. But um, <laughs> we'll get a verdict at the end. Of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we finished the tour in California, and uh, I flew out of the L.A. airport. Oh. And um, I saw three celebrities. In okay. the span of an hour. 
All right. Want to do like a guessing game? Uh, no, it would take too long. Okay. But I was sitting in the airport hotel and there was a cop uh, and then there was another cop and then another cop. And then like everybody in suits was like waiting for somebody to arrive. All right. And uh, I was like, who's coming? And they're like, it's some politician. You'll know who he is. Oh, and then I, know I was, who it is. And then I was with Mike from the band and Mike's like, is Bernie going to show up? <laughs> Everybody's getting so excited for Bernie. It was John Kerry, Secretary of State. Okay. Uh, uh, so that was exciting. Then we got to the airport and uh, the flight was delayed. So I wandered into the Air Canada elite status, uh, like living room. <laughs> like, like wandered in. Yeah, they did. Like I was because I've never free been beer in. there. There is free food there. It's like the oh, what's no, it with the elite class like hangout zone. I, they don't let me into those places. Yeah, actually, you know what's funny? Tim in our band, he has a membership. None of the rest of us do. So whenever we're at an airport, Tim just like goes off. He just leaves the rest. Yeah, of He you leaves guys. the rest of us, and he yeah. also like bypasses all the lines. I've been. I don't know. I got that thing. We all make the same amount of money, but uh, <laughs> well, also it's like if you're a frequent flyer, like you get them. I've been in once with yeah. my friend Randall, uh, and it, it's it's pretty glorious. It's like, pretty good. The one at the at uh, Pearson mm -hmm. is like free Guinness on tap. You serve yourself all unlimited. Free food. Well, yeah. Wow. I mean, they're not going to cut you off. There's no one no. standing there. That's crazy. So yeah. in, in the in the airport, so the first guy I see, I think, is a colleague of ours. Ben Mulrooney. Oh. You know, he's got a little ass. <laughs> I knew that. Everyone you know, knows that. When you see, he's got like a little butt. Mm -hmm. But he looks great on TV, so, so I started thinking my own butt. How do you think your butt looks? It's a little too big. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost like 30 pounds. Yeah, yeah honestly. Something. Yeah, people have been commenting on my, my tan. But um, so I saw him. I didn't say anything to him, though. Did you meet a real celebrity? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like oh, yeah. no I'm, one's getting I'm, excited I'm getting for there. John Kerry. So okay. get this. Um, <laughs> so there's this really sort of alternative looking chick. She's got like she's a white girl. She's got uh, cornrows. They're like purple though. She's like the white Allen Iverson. Okay. She's got a tattoo on her hand. And I go, oh, Ruby Rose. Oh, okay. From uh, Orange is the New Black. And I don't That's watch crazy. that show, but Lauren, my girlfriend, watches that show and loves Ruby Rose. And like last year became very popular for every straight female to say, Women Crush Wednesday, Ruby Rose. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Joe, this is a pretty big deal. She was totally by herself. She was like on her phone. And I was going to say, I was going to like go up and say something to her because because I, I was thinking of you guys actually I was like this would be a great story for the pod but then just as I was about to some other asshole who kind of was just like me like had no business talking to Ruby Rose went up and we like started talking about Australia or wherever she's from and uh and that's like he got the guy got in the way and then she but she was on my flight first class and I was trying to think I was like what is my in here how can I like get her attention as I'm walking down the aisle right getting onto the plane so I, the best thing I could come up with was, oh, I'll talk about music really loudly because maybe I'll say a name of a band that she's really into. Right. So for some reason, I went with a spoon, which I don't know. That was like the first thing that came to mind. I was like, I said to Mike, who's with me, I was like, ah, I love that spoon song. And I, <laughs> you say it almost a little too loud. I said it too loud. So she's supposed to chime in like, I love spoon. <laughs> oh, did you mention spoon, young man? <laughs> that's a horrible plan. That would never work with Yeah, anyone. well, that's why I wanted to talk yeah. to you guys about it. Have you guys done anything like that? Uh where you like saw a celebrity like in the street. You saw Kevin yeah. Durant. I did. You didn't say anything to him. No. no. I saw Jason Schwartzman. Uh, this once. hardly counts though. What? Weren't you like in the John audience? Carey Says the counts? guy that got it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Ben Mulroney's <laughs> tiny butt. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Jason Schwartzman's huge. You, yeah, I would think you're a little small. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. When I say it doesn't count, I meant I thought I thought you asked him a question in the audience at like a, at a much thing. Like no, I've ago. met him several times. Oh, okay, and had dinner beside him. Oh, okay, so what did you do? It what was, was your the uh, Toronto International Film Festival going on mm -hmm. about ten years ago, peak of my uh, fandom for the movie Rushmore, which was his first movie. And then I was just waiting outside an elevator with a camera, uh. and he walked out. And I walked up to him with the camera and I said, could you be in a skit uh, that I'm shooting right now? And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. Oh. He just acted in a skit. That, was he good? He was amazing. Oh, so it was cool. wicked. Oh, but man. I bumped into him like four times that day and he got really weirded out. Oh. <laughs> and he started avoiding me and stopped saying hi every time we passed. First three times he'd be like, oh, hey, hey, man. <laughs> then he just walked by me stone face. <laughs> then four hours later... I went for dinner and he sat right beside me. Oh my! He and must we didn't been, talk the whole time. Uh, he must have been like, "Oh my god, yeah. what have I done? This guy's this talker." Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but speaking of great films, we have uh, Richard Linklater on this uh, 
podcast today, guys. Rick. As, Rick. Uh, and that's, how, that's what friends call him. Yeah, Ethan Hawk likes to call him. So we did this interview at the Shangri-La Hotel. Neither of you guys are with me, like my wingmen. Like, I wanted to go. I know. I felt bad that you couldn't go. I you was were away out of on town. tour, yeah. Uh, and normally it's like, it's a big one. You guys get really excited. It's always fun to have one of you there, like producing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I went by myself, you know? Uh, and I heard the uh, crew f- up big time. I, not my words, but uh, halfway. That was your words. You, heard, I, you said Dylan f***ed up like Yeah, I said he really <laughs> f***ed up. I hope I never see him. Oh, Dylan, what's up, brother? Uh, no, but uh, so we're in this interview. I've, ne- I've This is like the second junk. And the other one I ever did was Bobby Cannavale and uh, Terrence Winter. Yeah. So I go to the Shangri-La and we're in the room and we're kind of waiting and we're shooting this thing for this pilot that we're doing. And so I'm kind of like, all right, bright lights. We're doing the damn thing. Um, he comes in, we start talking. We're like, just kind of getting into a groove like two minutes in and he's halfway through uh, a question. And as you'll hear on the pod, the guys, the crew, they shut it down because his lab stopped working. So his microphone stopped working. So then I'm kind of in that thing where it's like, well, I don't want it to go cold. So I got to kind of like keep talking to him. So I'm like, so you like baseball? I don't know what I said. You'll have to listen back. But you go nuts, like get super nervous at those moments. In that moment? Mm -hmm. No, because when you're in it, you're kind of cool. It's like, what are you going to do? You're not going to panic or start sweating. It's just more like, I just want to keep this dude engaged because instead he'll just kind of like, I don't want him to space mm-hmm. out. And then you have to restart the rapport or whatever you yeah. call it. So, no, I was pretty cool. I didn't care. It's just like I remember when Nick Carter was here. Yeah. And it took a little bit to set up, but you just got to chill with Nick Carter sitting across from you. Yeah, we just talked sports. But thank God you know about sports because I would just be sitting there with nothing to say. Right. Yeah, yeah. the sports in is always good. Yeah, if they're into sports, you know. Yeah, like I some, always a lot ask. people are into sports. Uh, like what... Uh, like what city they grew up in. And if I know anything about their city, I'll say something and then hopefully that generates a conversation. But sports is usually the best one. Mm-hmm. We never got to whether uh, how you feel about his glasses. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll save that for the next <laughs> pod. Oh, a teaser. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, uh, we're going to get to uh, Richard Link later. Let's do it. How's it going, man? Good, good. <laughs> Been busy yeah. doing the whole, whole junket thing? Yeah, it feels like I just did a bunch of those little five minute quick hitters. Yeah, it's an easy yeah, movie to talk right. about. There's a lot, but, you know. Fun stuff to talk about. Saw the whatever. movie on Tuesday. Whatever. You did. Oh, good. Yeah, it was fantastic. I really dug it. It's like a party. <laughs> it is like a party. I well, Honestly, growing up, I played I a lot. Of... To, I want it to feel like a party. You know, like what makes a good party? Uh, fun people, energy, music. Yeah, yeah exactly. What did, what did you play? Uh, growing up, I played a lot of baseball um, and I, I did a lot of partying. So for me, they I do feel go like, hand in hand. I agree. So for me, yes. it felt like it really uh, I played resonated. Like the biggest partiers. They're often portrayed in movies like jocks with crew cuts who. Are, Really straight, narrow. dedicated it's to like, craft. No, <laughs> no, they think they're so like special that they can drink all night and still perform. Like the person who goes, "Oh, I drive better when I'm drunk. I play better when I'm hungover." <laughs> you know, some of them actually deliver, though. You know, oh yeah, they wouldn't if they if they couldn't get away with it. But um, yeah, it does lend itself to a work hard, play hard environment. Did you play a lot of baseball growing up? Mm-hmm. All sports, football, okay. basketball, baseball, but. I think by high school, um, I played football and baseball in high school, but I was, you know, since I quit growing <laughs> too much, I was very fast, so baseball became the sport I could keep playing. What was your position? High school, mostly shortstop. Okay. I was never a pitcher, but by college, um, I kind of settled into left field. Yeah. That's where they kind of used the speed and the, and it just, I was a good hitter. Cool. Base runner. All right, well, let's get into this movie. Yeah, sure. Uh Dazed and Confused is sort of looked back on as this sort of like massive gem of casting, like a casting gold mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and aside from like Zoe and Tyler, like this film is virtually unknowns. When you're casting a film, I mean, do you, does it matter to you that the actor fits what you've written? Or if you have a certain actor that's got a certain charisma, you'll sort of mold the role to fit the actor? Both. Both. I'm looking for a certain type, but I'm also kind of like the sports analogy works. You want the best players, and then you'll figure out what position you know they're going to play. Draft the best player. Yeah, Not, get the best player. Player. So I, I wanted the most unique, kind of energetic, funny. And also I have a narrow, narrower um, look because I, I kind of needed believable athletic bodies you know types guys, guys that could play who seemed like okay. college athletes oh. yeah oh what's the matter Sorry. what's going on that audio just connected is that you? yep my mic yeah. <laughs> time to start today i'm on central time so i had to get up a little <laughs> earlier yeah, and, uh, you know my hours are yeah, stay up that? late sleep as late as possible but you know in the morning like this it was like oh you gotta 
eight thirty. I'm like, that's seven thirty, right? Yeah, yeah. Can I just see your microphone? Takes a lot. Takes a lot to Sorry. get me up early. But you know, when you do it, you do it. Yeah. The kind of, I'm just mo- yeah, I'm, I'm moving it. It doesn't. Need, you can just set it back there. Leave so it on the I'm table not. If you want I don't it. have to wear it. Cool. All since right. we're not. You walking. must wear. It. Is that okay? Yeah. Just, just test again. Um. Can you hear me? No. And you go. One two one two. You staying in Toronto tonight? Yeah. Here We're having a screening, and I'm doing the discussion. You, you know that kind dinner? of kind of the full okay. thing. I would love to, but you know, I think they have me so scheduled. They can schedule that. Yeah, you're just hang out. Yeah. Are you I rolling would love to? Yes. Oh yeah. Let's just use those. I don't know. Forget it. We'll just okay. we'll sync it up later. Oh. You were saying you need to find guys that can play, can play ball, as well as act. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I wanted, I wanted that kind of young male entitled athletic swagger <laughs> that you can't really fake. Right. Either you have that or you don't. And almost everybody in this cast had had been an athlete of you know to to whatever degree, so they could kind of relate to that. Um, so I thought, felt that was important. You know, that's a kind of what the film's about. You know, that sort of. Um, you know, the way our culture elevates athletes in a certain way that's... Sure, they're rock stars at such yeah. a young age, and they yeah. sort of, they operate with that uh-huh. bravado. Yeah, um, and it, it ends very quickly as soon as you quit playing ball. Yeah, if you don't go pro, it's yeah, over. Yeah, it's over. you got to get a job. You're 22, and yeah. you're, you know, it's like, oh, gosh, why is the world treating me? You know, it's very <laughs> different. It's very different. So I told the guys, like, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you still think you're on top of the world and all that. So there's a certain kind of humor, I think, derived in the movie from... Just the way they carry themselves you sure. know, through the world, it's pretty funny. Well, you mentioned the way they carry themselves. There's like this authentic uh, chemistry with all the guys. I mean, for you as a director and sort of the guy that created all of this, um, how do you cultivate that? Do you go out for beers with the dudes? A little bit. I mean, in in this film's case, it was we had a three weeks of rehearsal. I have a, a bunkhouse. I have some land outside of Austin, Texas, where we were filming, and we they just moved in. They all lived together for weeks. Did you stay there as well? No, I have another building. So I said, no, let them have the yeah, place. Yeah, they can. No, I that would have wouldn't have worked. I wanted them to bond, and you know, you really get to know people if you're waiting on them to get out of the bathroom. You're hearing them snore at night across the room. You know, you you really get to know people by living in such proximity. So it was a real fun, like, work, play, all-encompassing, working on the movie, but having a great time atmosphere. And that's where the their humor and energy, that's where I start, <coughs> you know, to mold it, to, to kind of differentiate the characters and really bring them to life. It comes in that process. Right. I believe it was in uh, Vulture where Quentin Tarantino said that he has a bunch of sort of influential friends and he sent out an email about, I don't know if you read this at all, mm-hmm. and he asked them all uh, who are the sort of the, the 10 most exciting directors working right now. And the only two that came back on everybody's list were you and David Fincher. Mm-hmm. Um, Fincher has a pretty distinct style. Very different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> but you toggle like pretty yeah. effortlessly between drama, comedy, everything. Sure. What do you think it is that makes you an exciting director and why you end up on that list? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not the best one to analyze myself. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i really just trying to tell the next story, make films that are interesting to me, and always kind of challenge the form a little bit as far as storytelling. You know, I've always been kind of... Um, I feel like trying to push narrative you know like there's properties about cinema that aren't theater they're not literature you know what's unique about cinema and people go oh well this is another plotless story I said well what does that mean you know plotless does that mean it's not watchable no quite quite on the contrary plot can be very burdensome on a movie you know that's where actors are they're explaining why they're doing things so the, so the audience can understand what the hell's going on. But we go through our lives. I'm trying to mirror what life kind of feels like. Life is plotless. Yeah. It's only when you look back when it sort of makes yeah. sense and feels it, like the tapestry was. Yeah, I'm trying to edit life in an interesting way to make it fun and watchable in a story form. So I'm all about character and storylines and kind of the energy of, of the moment. But it, plot is sort of kind of a constructed device. So I've always been a little bit at war with that. You know, our lives don't have much plot, but then it's pretty innate in storytelling. 
plot. So I've always been kind of battling that, in a, hopefully in a fun way. Right. The dialogue continues in this movie, where it's really just a character piece. And what you have is a time structure in place of plot. And in this case, it's that long party weekend before college starts, really. Yeah. So it's my college movie, but there's really not much college in it. Right. You know, it's that party before college. So. Well, there's something kind of interesting because, you know, with Dazed and Confused, and this has been described as like a spiritual sequel, it's like there's like that anxiety of the, the kids that are new to high school and then obviously the ones that are ending their journey. This one feels very optimistic in a lot of ways because you're at the start of this sort of great thing. Yeah, it's as different as high school is to college. I'm here to report college is a lot more fun. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> by the end, you know, high school, it's like, oh, their worlds are going to change. Not all of them are going to college and they're going to go different places and you know, that's very, it's very different. But for me, high school was all about uh, kind of the rebellion about about all that oppression and those restrictions where this was about the freedom, just that the adult freedom that you have as a college person, you know, you're there by choice, you know, you can stay out all night, you can eat and drink whatever you want, you choose your friends, you, you know, but I remember thinking like, well, these are adult decisions, you know, this is going to affect who I ultimately am. High school, you can kind of write it off like, oh, sure. I'm just a kid. But now it's like, oh, wait, you know, I'm, I'm what classes to take, who to hang out with, what to read, who to, you know, these are these are adult decisions that are going to determine ultimately who you are. And you don't even, that's a blank slate. So if there's an optimism in the air, it's, to me, that's of the endless possibilities, you know, of who you are and who you could be. You don't, you haven't fully defined that yet. And to me, identity was a, was a metaphor in the movie, like, who are we? And the, part of it's in the music here. You know, like one night they go to a disco, then sure. they're at a country, country bar, bar, then yeah. they're at a punk club, there's metal, they're listening to hip hop. So it's a lot of the genres and the music forms they find themselves, you know, within are, are very different. So they're kind of even, they're just wondering who they are. Um, did you party a lot in college? Sure. <laughs> and I, I went with the flow, you know, if, if I'm kind of like Jake in, the, in that way, I knew I, I knew it was probably better to bond. I've been on enough teams and team coherent, you know, uh, coherency, you know, I, I like, okay, yeah, if they're all going, I, I'm going to be one of the guys. I'm not going to be the weirdo. Because uh, you see in the movie, there's two characters who have made a mistake off screen somewhere, but they're already on the outs with the team they're being treated they're being ridiculed they're they're treated. yeah and it's probably as simple as that he didn't go drinking with them he stayed and talked to, on, to his girlfriend on the phone instead of going out you know so that can cost you. you you know you could be making up for that for a full semester so would that be the advice then uh, if your friends want to go drinking go drinking with them and you'll, you'll <laughs> make more friends and have stronger bonds uh, it really depends on the friends and the environment <laughs> you find now I have no problem saying no I'm going home right. I'm not gonna go have a drink or do that but you know it's just it, a stage in your life it, it you know it depends on what environment you you find yourself in I mean I'm not one for conformity, but there probably is a time to take the social cues from those around you and get along. I mean, that's a kind of, it's political decisions, you know. Heard Hillary Clinton, when she was a senator, would do shots of, you know, whiskey or whatever to get along with the guys, you know. Wow. That's a smart politician. There's that's value that. in that. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, but it, it's, you can't help but be who you are, you know, at all these, at all these points, you know. Well, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, really good appreciate it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's that? That's that. Oh, wow. Sure. I mean, we're done here. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Just keep everything rolling. Where's the screening tonight? You know, I'm not actually sure. They just bring you everywhere you need to go. I don't have to have that part of my brain working. Pretty sweet. I'm like a dog that's just being led on a leash to the next thing, you know. I kind of enjoy shutting, because in our lives, you know, you have to, oh, where is it? It's like, I can just shut down that part of my brain. Yeah. It would leave me vulnerable. I could probably be, you know. <laughs> well, then, speaking Easily. of that, like, you one thing I was going to ask is this, like, do you find it hard to toggle back and forth between these long-term projects, like the Before Trilogy or Boy yeah. and then doing these standalone films? Yeah, not really, because those things aren't that thought out, you know. Like, oh, it's nine years later, and I'm doing another Ethan and Julie movie. You know, it's sort of, I guess it's a different psychology going in, but it's not, it's not like a problem yeah. physically. <laughs> right. Boyhood, shooting and editing every year for 12 years now, that was much, 
I had the idea for that and this around the same time. And so I would say that was harder than, than this. Sure. <laughs> it was its own thing. It had its own vibe and its own rewards, but it's, this is more standard. I think by the end of Boyhood, people were like, oh, it's kind of a gimmick. <laughs> we were at some, we were at some uh, awards. You know, it's like the Producers Guild. It's like, hey, 12 years, but yeah. so-and-so has been trying to make this film for 20 yeah. years. Hey, or they oh, spent 15 yeah. years wanting it. It's like, no, no, no. I was like, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. There's a difference between yeah. wanting to make a film for 12 yeah. or 15 Chinese. or 20 years and Absolutely. actually making one. Absolutely. You know, I'm here to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Max, this is everybody's favorite segment. This is what we like to call the dessert on the podcast. This is where our friend and pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham, comes on, and he talks about uh, maybe a movie he's seen, yeah. some music he's listening to. What do you, you, what have you been baking up for us? Serve us the dessert. Um, well, I've... <laughs> that was the weirdest <laughs> he's thing. He's been ever. working on that delivery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've, I got uh, new glasses. I noticed yeah. Which oh. you said uh, you weren't going to talk... You were saving it for some episode yeah, yeah, to talk yeah. about. Can yeah. that be right now? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I like them. Oh, right? shit. Because okay. yeah. earlier you said you did. No, but I was... Phony mode. Yeah. Phony max. They're... See, here's what I'm going for. Okay, what do you... I'm going for like... Wow, those are the worst glasses ever, and that's cool. Th- that is how it will work. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. What do you think? You, I know you hate them because you haven't said shit about them, and you're doing that face. <laughs> no, that's just my makeup face. Uh, I, <laughs> you're a geisha girl face. Yeah, I, uh, I'm honestly neutral. I think they're interesting. I'm going to give them time to settle in. They were jarring the first day I saw them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they're nearly as bad as the way my brother made them out to seem. I think Max was unnecessarily harsh, but he's been on the road, cut him some slack. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I, they're good. They're growing on me. Do I look like Miss Doubtfire? <laughs> <laughs> no, you look okay, cool. You look cool. really cool. Okay, yeah. right. no doubt. So. Awesome. So that was like uh, big news in my life, yeah. wearing glasses. I was a little self-conscious of it, uh-huh. but you guys uh, make me feel a lot better. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I do think they look good. You just changed your mind. Whoa. Shit. I, I said I was neutral, and I'm, I'm on, I've fallen off on the side of good now. Cool. Awesome. What not, about you? Same? Not there yet. Still nope. the same. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. So what else? Okay. Oh, yeah. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? I got news. This is big news for me. I don't know if it's big news for Max, but uh, I'm going to be directing music uh, video. Oh, yes. This is news. Yeah. I love that we're sharing this on the oh, pod. Right. Well, first All right. of all... We have to bleep the name of the song because the song hasn't been, even been announced yet. Okay, we'll bleep All that. Right. So, but yeah, for our listeners, Shane is going to be directing an Arkells video. That's uh, right. From our upcoming record that you'll be hearing all about shortly. Okay, uh, so there's that. How do you feel about that? W- we're very excited about it because the, th- the, the story in the, in the song is about a road trip that we were all on together. And we're going to travel down to uh, the Heartland, Na- Nashville, Memphis, and maybe f- and film it there. So this music video will be shot in Nashville. Yeah. Can we... So it's based off a bachelor party yeah. we went on. Can we recreate... Honestly, though. Yeah. Can we incorporate in the budget flying down some champagne boys in it? Like, are you cool with that? From my experience, you're the one in charge. Okay. <laughs> this is but the I don't want you to think I'm wasting... Money. I think it could be cool to have a posse. I think I think you just got to do it. And okay, I just want that stamp. Obviously, I'll make it good. And I also want to say I'm not directing this alone. I'm Mark Myers is directing it with me. Yeah, who's like amazing director, and I'm kind of just like his sidekick buddy. <laughs> okay, so- all right, that's exciting though. What else is going on? What else is going on? So I saw uh, the Jungle Book. Oh yeah, me too. And I'm going to marry Alex. What? Yeah. <laughs> No, you're kidding. No, I wouldn't kid. On national TV? Kidding? <laughs> Wait <laughs> a second. This is live, right? Yeah. Like you've proposed? Well, no, it wasn't really a proposal. It was just like we I said- I gotta know about this a little bit. What the f***? How come I'm the only one that doesn't know? Well, I, we didn't tell anyone because- Like you and Max? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm out in the cool. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, I wanted Max to play the, uh, the Post Malone song, White Iverson, at the wedding. So uh, I had to call him to make sure he was free. Yeah, he called me. Where was I? When the hell is the wedding? It's in August. What? This yeah. is mind boggling. Who knows besides you and Alex and Max? <laughs> just Max. I just <laughs> wanted him to be the band. He wanted me but to there was, play. All right, hold on. This is massive news. This is crazy. Yeah. You're breaking this on the podcast. Yeah, I wanted to save it because it was like, oh, house and then this. And everyone would be like, Shane's crazy. I'm flabbergasted. Good for ratings. Okay, shit. How'd you do it? Uh, I, I didn't ask. Like we're okay. Okay, here's how it went down. This uh, is gonna be like for our crew another half an hour. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's how it went down. Um, was in Prince Edward County 
for Alex's birthday. You had been dating for a solid two and a half months then. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was getting a little long, so I was like, it's time. But, okay, the, so you're in Prince Edward County. Taking. Yeah, and then uh, I, part of the package I got for her birthday was a massage. And I got a massage too. And then she's like, oh, you can uh, write these off. And I was like, no, I can't. I can write my massage off, but I can't write Alex's massage off because I'm not married to her. And if we were married, uh. I could get the money back on her massage. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, we're going to get married anyway. It's like Alex and so I. This have- was more of a, like a sake of taxes and stuff. No, no. But that's what spawned it. it yeah. I'm not just marrying her to get massage money back. It's like $500. <laughs> that's just an dollars. awesome perk. Yeah. 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 So then I was just, it was just the impetus to get the ball rolling. And we just kind of talked about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, let's get married. Like, let's not get engaged. Because I don't like engagements. Because I just like, I'm such an anxious person. I just want things to happen. So you're technically not engaged right now? We're just getting married. <laughs> not engagement. It's just we're getting married. And it's going to be like, it's going to be in her backyard. It's going to be nothing. Like a little wedding. Who's invited? You. If you, if you can make it. All right, let's do it. And you should be uh, best man. No. Yeah, best man it. Really? Yeah. This is awesome. Seriously? Yeah. But it's not like, I don't know what best men do, but do those things. Well, I don't sh- know what they are. Okay. Do you feel pressure to start a, uh, start a bachelor trip for old Shaney boy? Yeah. Well, that's why I was thinking, can we double dip and use the music video for my bachelor party? Oh, it's like, that's amazing. <laughs> Hold on. But anyway, okay, we'll get back. Let's, we're burying the lead. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'd re- I'd love to be your best man. Uh, I'm honestly really honored. This is amazing. It, it, this, this is great. And you knew about this. Uh, yeah, I was. Wa- I, I I only told one person, Lauren. <sighs> so is you told Lauren? Loose lips, Lauren. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Everybody, Lauren doesn't knows. talk to anybody. <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh my God. Uh. Yeah. So this is awesome. So when are you gonna start telling people? No, we can't. We have the pod has to debut this news. I'm going nuts to Instagram post it. Oh, yeah. you, you do want to? So you're gonna Instagram post no, it? No, well, this. Alex wants to because she was like, "Oh, when can I do it?" So I told her after I tell you. But like for fans of the no, show, no, you know what? You can you can post it today if you want. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Max gives you permission. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is so exciting! Mm-hmm. You really you broke the news on the, uh, so the pod. Yeah, uh, I was very nervous about it too because. Our other friends <clears throat> did something similar to this, Mike M and Julian, and it caused a, like a rift between them. Oh, you mean getting married? Oh, yeah. So I'm getting married in September. You're getting married in August. Yeah. So is Danica going to be pissed at this? Not at all. This will be no Because I was like, oh, Mike's, because I don't know. I don't give two shit. I think it's awesome. The more weddings, the merrier, man. Yeah. Yeah. I figured Literally just get it over. Married her. <laughs> I missed the it. wordplay is phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, but honestly, like I think it's awesome. I don't think there'll be an issue at all. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Like I'm yeah. so excited. Shane, do you Good. worry that the reservoir of crazy stories is going to run dry once you get married. Oh, Ooh, think of, he's thinking that's a producer oh, thinking about the pot. You think the wedding bombshell is good? The divorce one, the marriage <laughs> is falling apart. Yeah. Marriage counseling. Come on. That's you good. think it's going to last? True. It's only going to get a little better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what else there's to talk Let's about. Wrap this I mean, show. that's about it. Anything else? Jungle book. Nine out of 10. Oh, good. Really? Yeah. 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 I was on uh, weed gummies at the time. <laughs> That's it. That's our episode. That was insane news. Shane's getting married. Woo woo! He really enjoyed the Jungle Book. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all there is, man. Yeah, you can find us online at uh, on Twitter and Instagram, Mike on Much. Leave us a comment on the, our iTunes page. We could use a few more of those. And uh, tweet us your questions. Uh, we want to start engaging a little bit more. Maybe next episode we'll, we'll read some questions that you guys are asking us Ooh, on like the that. air. Yeah, I got a few that we'll do next week. All of our artwork is done by Jenna Gregory at jennasdoodles.com. A huge shout out to Dan Carruthers, who's keeping things real on the social media side for us at much. Uh, who else do we got to thank? That's it for this week, my brother. That's it. All right. The Michael Much Podcast is produced by Max Kerman, and I am your host, Mike Veerman. See you next week. We don't die on the weekend.